Are you printing for speed or for quality? Recently, I watched a video that got me thinking about 3D print speed versus quality. The video maker was demonstrating a new CAD simulation feature and used this gentle marble run model from Thingiverse. Now, it's a pretty cool feature. But as part of the demonstration, the video maker printed the model and the marble failed to make it through without getting stuck. To me, it seemed obvious that the model was printed for speed instead of quality. So I did my own test. I printed this one with a profile designed for fast printing. And this one was printed with my standard go-to uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height profile. Let's see how they compare. The model printed with the standard profile works fine. But as you saw, the one printed with the uh, speed profile did not. Of course, this one took longer to print. So, at what point do we sacrifice quality for speed? I'm Bill, and this is Pushing Plastic. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of people online trying to see how fast they can print a Benchy. My guess is because of the hype over the Bamboo Lab X1 and P1P printers. They are fast. You can't deny it. But they were built that way from the bottom up. Personally, I don't know how long they've been in development before hitting the market, but I'll guarantee you it didn't happen overnight. When I look at the pictures of those printed and posted online, I see the typical issues that pop up when printing too fast. Under extrusion, poor layer adhesion, layer shifting, weak infill, poor bridging, and eh, of course the granddaddy of them all, ringing or ghosting. You'll probably also, also notice the decrease in dimensional accuracy and strain. Now, before all the keyboard commandos go to DEF CON 1, this video is about finding the balance of speed and quality, not how fast can I make my printer move before the parts start to fall off. That might be a fun video. There are limits to what these printers can do before losing quality. The number one factor in achieving faster print speed, not to be confused with print time, is directly tied to the printer's ability to handle a given speed. Fast movement of the printer creates large amounts of vibration and that results in poor quality prints. Also, consider when wanting the printer at high speeds, there's a lot of wear and tear on your equipment. I'm not for that wear and tear on my equipment. Besides the printer's ability to handle the speed, you need to consider the filament types and the flow rates. Doesn't matter how much speed you can get out of the printer if the filament can't melt fast enough to keep up with the printer. Sure, you can turn the temperature up, but then you'll be looking at blobs, zits, and strings. Now, in general, PLA prints good at about 60 millimeters per second. DPU, on the other hand, prints decent somewhere between, say, 20 to 35 millimeters per second. So we need to find the happy spot of speed and quality. The best settings for everyone's, uh, everyone's printer is going to be different, and they're going to depend on factors such as the printer itself, the filament being used, and the printer's environment. So, well, how do we find the right print speed? We run temperature towers to determine uh, the best temperature for our, our different filaments. At least you should be. And if you're not, well, you should be. The same goes for retraction. We print test towers to find out what retraction distance works best for our fil filament and printer combination. So, it would only make sense that we run a speed tower to find out what speed works best for our printer and the filament we're using. And that's what we're going to do. The easiest way to do this is to use the Auto Tower Generator plugin for Cura. I've used this in a previous video to make a temperature tower. This time, we're going to use it to run a speed tower. Let's open up Cura and get started. 
If you don't already have it downloaded and installed in Cura, come up here to the upper right hand corner of the screen and click on Marketplace. When the Marketplace screen opens, scroll on down until you find Auto Towers Generator. Click on the blue install button and accept the terms of service. You'll need to quit Cura and reopen it for the changes to take effect. Now, what we're going to do is come up here to the extensions pull down. We're going to select auto towers and scroll on down to where the speed tower uh, speed tests are. And I'm going to select the one for 20 to 100 millimeters per second. And I'll click on that. And there it is in the center of our build plate. Let's zoom in and take a look. You can see the numbers running up the sides of the model along the X axis and also along the Y axis. This is going to start our print at 20 millimeters per second. Then when we reach this section here, it's going to increase the speed to 40 millimeters per second, then 60, 80, and finally 100 millimeters per second. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. If you look at the G code and search for M220 to find the speed change, you'll find something that looks like this. It's based off of your current profile print speed. In this case, my speed is set to 50 millimeters per second. You'll see the print speed of 40% on your LCD screen. What it's doing is taking that 50 and reducing it to mimic 20%. So it's setting your printer to 40%. Does that make sense? Now, if my profile print speed was set to 60 millimeters per second, your G code would look like this. And we would see 33% uh, uh, print speed on our LCD. Because again, it's trying to take what our current setting is and mimic that to get it down to 20. And then it'll do the same thing for 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. Now, since the auto tower generator is taking care of it for us, we don't need to worry about it. But it's just good information to know. If you're looking at your LCD screen, you'll understand what's going on there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and print this on the stock Ender 3 and see what I get. Along the x-axis, I'm liking 60. I actually see a hint of ringing at 60. At 80 millimeters per second, I'm seeing a lot of ringing. Along the y-axis, I'm liking 60 as well. Now, typically on my stock Ender 3, I've been using 50 millimeters per second. I'm sure I could probably get a decent quality at maybe 65, 70 millimeters per second. I want more. So I'm going to load a Benchy into Cura, and I'm going to slice it with a standard 0.2 millimeter layer height profile. And I'm going to go ahead and use this PLA Plus that I've had laying around for about three years. I'm still looking for a color that videos well and shows better detail. If you have a suggestion, let me know down below in the comments. I'm going to do this with a Benchy instead of uh, printing a speed tower because I already know what the speed tower says and I don't want the speeds changing throughout this print. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slice this at the standard 0.2 millimeter layer height and we're looking at an hour and 46 minutes to print. So let's print it and use this as a baseline. I'm liking what I see. Quality's pretty good. Not seeing any stringing. Got good overhangs. Layer adhesion's pretty good. It's a benchy. It'll do. Not bad for three-year-old filament, but I want more. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a 
few changes to the settings and see if we can reduce the time but maintain the quality of the print. I'm going to change my print speed to 80 millimeters per second and I'm going to change the outer wall speed to 60 millimeters per second. The outer wall speed or the outer walls is what's visible when we look at the print. The speed tower showed me that I start to see ringing and ghosting above 60 millimeters per second. So I'm going to use that for my outer layer, uh, my outer walls. The next change I'm going to make is to my inner wall speed. I'm going to use 70 millimeters per second. The walls aren't seen. Now, Cura does recommend keeping this value somewhere between the outer wall print speed and the infill print speed. Like I said, the inner walls aren't seen and I'm not hurting the print strength by going with 70 millimeters per second. For my infill print speed, I'm going to use 75 millimeters per second. And I'm picking 75 mostly so I can keep my inner uh, wall speed at 70. Remember, Cura recommends keeping your inner wall speed at a speed between your outer wall speed and your infill speed. It's a lot of speeds in there. So I'm going with 75. I'm going to leave my travel speed at 200, but I am going to check, or yeah, I'm going to look at my initial layer speed. I'm taking that up to 125 millimeters per second. It's a drastic change. But I'm also going to change my initial layer print speed to 40 millimeters per second. There are two different settings. Now, the lower initial layer print speed at 40 helps with bed adhesion. The skirt in this case is going to lay down at 125 millimeters per second. The same should happen with a brim or a raft. Now, let's slice and see what we get. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two benches. I'm not seeing a major difference between the two. Maybe I could slow the infill speed down a little. So we found that the optimal print speed for my Stock Ender 3 with that three-year-old filament is about 60 millimeters per second before we see our quality drop off. We adjusted a few more print speed settings and knocked off about 20 minutes from our print without losing quality. Now, Obviously, other ways to uh, reduce print time would be a bigger nozzle or a bigger layer height. You just won't get the resolution you might want. You could reduce the number of walls along with the top and bottom layers, but that opens the door to a weaker print that might make the infill be seen through the top or bottom of the print itself. The purpose of this video was speed versus quality. Now, I hope you found this information useful. If you did, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new information in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe so I can continue to grow this channel.